You look broken, Shane. I tend to uh, use the barbs instead of the streamlines. The barbs, I, I get a better mental picture um, of where the wind's coming from than the streams. Uh, but that's just that's just me. Uh, let's turn the streams on for those who like the streams. There you go. That's what the wind's going to look like. Let's go back to looking at barbs again. Um, so you'll see what I'm worried about here is. There's my boat and the angle that my wind comes at in relation to my boat. The more the wind uh, comes from this northerly direction, the worse off I'm going to be uh, for two reasons. Um, one, the, the waves generally follow the direction of the wind and if I get waves beam on, um, life is not so comfortable, particularly in a cat. Um, even a yacht, for that matter. Uh, we, waves on the beams, no fun. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get my route to look a little bit more like... Uh, apart from the wiggle there from the way, <laughs> it's going to look a little bit more like that. So while the wind is a bit softer, uh, let's, oops, let's uh, go back here while I'm sailing in this softer wind here um, I can comfortably and what I'm currently doing is uh, trying to sail in this direction here and then once the wind comes in um, then I'll start sailing like that what that means is if you look at the little barb here and I put my boat there's my boat the wind is more up the chuff instead of on the side. Um, how far I get up to here, uh, it's not going to be up, up here uh, because when we look in the scale of things, um, let's look at uh, one day sailing. Uh, right, so here we've got uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock, that's pretty much what we, where we are right now. Yeah, so we go to time now, boom. Um, so time now is this, this button down here. Um, let's go and sail 24 hours. Whoop. There you go. I'm going to be there in 24 hours time. Let's so 24 hours, yeah, I could, I could potentially be here. But I think the increase in breeze is going to get me, yeah. So there's going to be a few, a few puffy bits up here I've got to watch out for. Anyway, so that's, that's my current plan of attack. at another one of my downwind setups and in particular this is a damage control downwind situation because um, we've only got one rudder on our catamaran which normally has two rudders so we're a bit broken um, and what I'm going to show you here is this number here this is my rudder position this tells me how hard my rudder is working so 
it's working quite hard. It's um, steering to the port side, four degrees, five degrees, up to 10 degrees. Oh, there you go, 13 degrees because of the waves. What I'm trying to do is try and keep it as neutral as possible. The issue that I've got, see that's where I want my rudder. Oh, and a big slew as the waves are giving me a bit of a hard time here. Um, and believe it or not, this is sort of the better um, sail configurations that I've got going on at the moment. Um, to, to try and keep some speed up and balance the rudder. So let's have a look what I've got up uh, and I'll let you know how, why, how and why it works. So I got dagger boards here and I got my dagger boards down. So there's my dagger board over there and you can see it's disappeared, it's down. Over here, my other dagger board, it's not as down. Um, still probably don't need to, but small safety um, I'm in a small safety mode, still offshore, still 200 miles off um, the Caribbean coast, uh, still in Atlantic crossing mode, so leeward board is still up a little bit, windward board is down, and let's have a look at what i got flying in the sky. Oh, you probably haven't seen this one yet. A bit funny looking, isn't it? Um, it's not what I'd normally run. So I've got my fractional spinnaker up, and that black one there is what we call a GS, or a uh, Genoa Staysail. Um, and this is helping um, pull the bow away. And back here, I got my mainsail, which is in 4.3. Um, some may not have this option for a 4.3, but I insisted Anna put 4.3 in because you know, do a lot of um, miles offshore and um, it comes in handy, especially when shit like this happens. Um, yeah, so let's have a look uh, and talk about what's going on. Now, you can see my dagger board there. Where's my Genoa Staysail? It's in front of the dagger board. Where's my spinnaker? It's in front of the dagger board. Where is my mainsail? It's behind the dagger board. So the two sails in the front help to pull and bear away the boat so they're gonna steer the boat further downwind unfortunately my spinnaker because i sheet it right back here on the back corner um, it doesn't quite do that it's a little bit neutral um, if i have my tweaker on it helps a bit uh, where is my tweaker oh it's still on my jib from running last night um, if I run my tweaker, it does help, means that the sheeting point comes further forward and helps pull the bow away a little bit. But generally speaking, we're going all right. Um, yeah, the Genoa stay sail, we've got uh, pulling, it's all pulling from the front, so it's just bearing the back bow away. And my main sail here, because it's aft of the dagger board, it's pushing the back of the boat sideways that way which means that the boat wants to turn and round up into the wind um, you'll notice there's quite a lot of twist in my uh, mainsail to try and ease that pressure as much as possible I'm actually sailing against the lazy jacks but I don't want to be hitting the side stays and wearing holes in all my batten pockets so there's a compromise there um, now the uh, Genoa stay sail, you'll see the leech is not very twisted. It's a, so this is a sail from another boat um, and it was ripped in half and Anna repaired it and we moved some, the clue box a little bit higher and made it all work for us. So it's not perfect, but uh, it works well. But we trim this just like any normal jib um, and we want to have the gap between, let's go and have a look at the gaps, oh, through the square of dead. Now I'm not going on that side because you get wet on that side. <laughs> um, so 
there's the tack of my pole. There's my Genoa uh, or the jib. And here's my um, space sail. So I've got a reasonable separation between the, the two tacks of those two sails. If we look up here, I've got reasonable separation. So there's not too much interference between the two sails. Yeah, and what more can I say? <laughs> Uh, the sheeting position, because the, um, it's fairly lightly loaded, I can actually uh, sheet the Genoa Staple on my trampoline. That is not the ideal situation. That's uh, I got it going because I broke my rudder in the middle of the Atlantic solution. Uh, the solution will be a couple of soft pad eyes on the deck here, here and here. But anyway, um, so yeah, this is the setup I've got for trying to balance the boat and you'll see here probably a bit better as well but there's my dagger board over there and then there's my sheeting point for my Genoa Staysail there's the tack for Genoa Staysail so everything here is in front of the mast in front of the dagger board and pushing the bow to leeward most of the Genoa is in front of the dagger board but because we have the sheet behind the dagger board it interacts a little bit differently in that it does pull the transom around a little bit um, yeah and then we have the mainsail uh, the old dagboard at the dagger board now and you'll see the amount of mainsail that's actually behind the dagger board isn't a huge amount but it's enough to certainly um, want to skew it around okay and also now you'll see the trim of my sails when I catch a wave, that the kite just goes floppy. You saw it before, the Genoa just starts to laugh. Ah, uh, you know, the Genoa Stasel starts to laugh. Let's wait for it. Oh, kite rolling. Okay, you can just see the bubble appearing in the Genoa Stasel. Oh, it's not going to do it for me now. Always when I have the camera on and I want it to surf, it won't. Waiting, waiting. Okay, there you go. You can just see the Genoa, the luff of it bubbling and folding in. So that's showing me that my trim, there you go, there it is, is about right that both sails are folding at a similar time. The kite first um, before the Genoa staysail. And we want this because we want the Genoa Staysail to help recover the boat and steer it downwind. So we want it not oversheeted, but we certainly want it. There you go, look at it flapping there. We want it drawing and pulling while the, if the sail at the front starts flapping to help the um, autopilot bear the boat away and refill the kite. Uh, now let's have a look at it. Don't know whether you've been able to see the waves or not. But the waves are coming sort of at my back corner and then there's a cross swell that's also moving this way so every now and then I'll get a wave that hits the back corner here and it just shoves the transom this way basically wants to wipe me out there you go you can see a swell that just came from the left of screen to right of screen and there's a nice little squall behind us. That's going to upset a lot of things. Um, yeah, so this is what we're combating. All of these different forces and angle of a jangles and the dangles. Um, so now yeah, you can see the big trough of the waves here. So it's a very sideways swell coming through. And there you go, you can see the boat twisting around on the wave. So we're trying to um, soften the load on this poor old one rudder all by itself down here now. Um, seeing as that our port rudder departed us 800 miles ago. Uh, it's time to... Uh, A 
Hopefully that squall just passes behind us. Looks like it will. Should be fast enough to outrun that. But glorious day out here in the Atlantic. 